Hello and welcome to the guide on how to get the brand new Wishkeeper exotic bow as efficiently as possible and as easily as possible as a solo player. You do not need any teammates for this. You don't need LFG. You can do this on your own time. It'll take you about 15 to maybe 20 minutes max. Get through super quickly, super easily. First things first, how do you even get into the mission in the first place? You need to make sure that you've been keeping up with the seasonal story quest line. You have to be on step 29 of 55 to be able to access the mission. Even if you haven't been, it's completely okay. Even if you're at step one, it takes about two to three hours to get from step one to step 29. Most of the steps are just like talking to people, talking to Riven, talking to Hollow Projector, et cetera, et cetera. It goes by super quickly. Go ahead and burn through that. Once you're at step 29, you'll see that you have access to the new Starcross mission through the helm right over here on the right called Starcross. Before I go over the loadout that I'm recommending, I do want to mention that when you go to launch this, at the time that I'm recording it, there is a void threat and a solar and stasis surge. I don't know if these are going to change week to week or not. So do me a favor when you do launch this, make sure you look at the modifiers, make sure they're not different. If they are different, you might want to adjust your resistance mods and the elemental affinities of your weapons accordingly. Or you can just go ahead and run what I'm recommending. Might do a little bit less damage, but you'll still get through the mission pretty quickly. As far as the loadout that I'm recommending goes, Solar Celestial Nighthawk Hunter absolutely burns through this mission. There's a ton of tanky targets. The fact that Celestial Nighthawk one-shots all of them and gives you a third of your super back and then gets the rest of your super back pretty quickly makes it an absolute breeze. So I love Celestial Nighthawk for this. As far as the subclass setup goes, the important components are Golden Gun Marksman, so you can get precision hits with the Golden Gun, do more damage. Healing Grenade, so you can get a restoration buff initially and have a way to heal. Ember of Torches, so you can get a Radiant buff initially. And Ember of Empyrean, so you can extend those Restoration of Radiant buffs through Solar Weapon and Ability Final Blows. The rest of this stuff is kind of up to you. This is what I'm running. You can take a screenshot and just copy it or run your own personal preference. Completely up to you. As far as the mods go, this is what I've got set up. Harmonic Siphons, Loader, Scavenger. I've got two Void Resistances because there's a lot of Void damage here. One Arc Resistance because there's a little bit of Arc damage. Got two impact inductions, heavy ammo finder, reaper, time dilation, powerful attraction. Then I've got a solar weapon surge for my solar weapons, my rocket, and my hand cannon. And then I've got a kinetic weapon surge because kinetic weapon surge buffs the damage of Celestial Nighthawk, the golden gun Celestial Nighthawk, not solar surge. Helps out a little bit there. As far as artifact mods, this is what I've got set up. If you're able to get this far in the artifact, pick all these. If you're not, completely fine. Not that big of a deal. As far as weapons go, I love Wither Horde for this. There's a lot of super tanky phalanxes in here. Um, Wither Horde allows you to shoot them. Even if you hit their shield, it'll still stick to the phalanx and get absorbed by them. And they'll take that DOT over time damage. Feels really, really good for this. Any solar weapon will do here. I love the Apocal integration. Easy to get precision hits for bonus super energy with Celestial Nighthawk. Does a decent amount of damage. It's solar, so it'll go ahead and extend our buffs through Ember of Empyrean. It's really easy to get as well. You get it from the Lightfall small quest line from nimbus it's like six steps it's super easy and if you've already gotten it but you accidentally dismantled it since it is a statically rolled weapon you can just come into collections go to hand cannons and boom you just get to pull it right there for your final slot i recommend a solar rocket launcher or a rocket launcher matching with the surges i've got my reconstruction bait and switch apex predator you can run an auto loading rocket you can really run whatever you want it's up to you I've also got an eager edge sword here. You do not need to have an eager edge sword under any circumstances. I'm just having it on so I can get through this a little bit more quickly, make this video as short as possible for you uh, out of respect for your time. So, you know, as we're getting started, go ahead and follow my path. And uh, if you appreciate guides like these, you know, really straightforward ones, things of that nature, do me a favor, consider liking the video, subscribing to the channel so you can see more of my stuff. Uh, completely up to you, of course, but helps me make more videos and you know, I appreciate it. So, we'll go ahead and begin making our way over here using our Eager Edge Sword if you have it equipped to get along a little bit more quickly if you don't completely find. Um, not going to show you how to get any of the secret chests in here, by the way. I'm just showing you how to get the bow itself as quickly as possible. As we come to this first pack of enemies, the way we want to start any and all engagements is Healing Grenade to get Restoration, Throwing Knives to get our Radiant, and then we start killing our Ember of Empyrean will go ahead and juice up both of our buff durations by four seconds apiece for every single solar kill that we get. This is what is going to allow you to have permanent restoration and radiant in every single fight. 
feels really, really nice. Makes it a lot harder to die. The only thing you want to be on the lookout for is make sure that you don't accidentally throw your gunpowder gamble at your feet when you're trying to throw your healing grenade down as they both occupy the grenade button. Make sure you keep an eye on the lower left if you are using gunpowder gamble. If you decide to go with knock them down instead, don't have to worry about that. But I like gunpowder gamble for this a lot. Feels really solid. Just going to run past here. You can kind of skip some of those enemies back there, but you definitely want to kill all the enemies on the bridge because um, you don't want them shooting behind you. And right here is 50% of the mechanics of the entire mission. And it's very simple. You got a phalanx right here. He's very tanky. He has an overshield and I can't deal damage to him. If I stand in this blue circle, I get Sire's Obligation for 45 seconds. That then allows me to damage the Phalanx. That right there is why I love Celestial Nighthawk for this. Those guys are super tanky. Celestial Nighthawk, they're gone. Just like that. Not going to explain what was going on with the symbols right there because you don't need to know it yet. We'll talk about it in this upcoming section. For that guy that I just killed, just kill him. That's all you got to worry about. Once we get here, we're going to go ahead and swap to our rocket. Take off the uh, Eager Red Sword. And we're going to have our Sire's Obligation buff right here to consistently refresh that. Main gist here is that there's three Phalanxes here attached to different symbols. So that Phalanx right there is the Fish Phalanx. That Phalanx down there is the Dragon Phalanx. And then you'll have a third Phalanx over up here on the left. This one looks to be the Bird Phalanx. I don't know if you have to kill these Phalanxes in a specific order or not. I always just kill them um based on the order that the symbols are lined up at the exit door um if you want to try and kill them out of order be my guest but i feel like it doesn't take too much extra time to just kill them in order just in case so according to this we go fish then dragon then bird so we're gonna run over here and go mop up the fish phalanx first if you have your nighthawk available just use your nighthawk on the phalanxes it'll one shot them make your life easy if you don't have your nighthawk available go ahead and shoot the wither horde got your bait and switch rockets hoping i can kill this guy before my sire's obligation buff runs out but i missed all my rockets so i'm not entirely sure if i'll be able to never mind got a little lucky there's one down once you kill one of the phalanxes you'll notice that you have new sire's obligation acquisition points available on the map and you'll notice that you'll have some vex that will begin to spawn the regular Vex themselves are not too much of a problem and not as big of a concern with this. What is a concern, though, is the Cyclops that will spawn. I would highly recommend taking your time to kill the Cyclopses because with the void threat that is going on here, that 25% bonus damage that the Cyclops deal uh, is a pretty big deal. And it hurts a pretty significant bit. and can kill you if you're not paying attention really fast, so just go ahead and take them out. Uh, symbol number two looks like it was the dragon, which our dragon guy is right down here. So we'll go ahead and pop down. Fortunately, we have our Nighthawk available. So we'll just shoot him in the face and he's gone instantly. Killing him will spawn even more Vex and more Cyclopses. So something to keep an eye out for. So we're going to roam around. I see there's a Cyclops across the map right there. I'm going to try and hit him with a Wither Horde. Just keep myself safe. And just trying to make sure I didn't hear one behind me. Cyclops has heard a lot, so be respectful of them. Third phalanx is the bird one, which the only phalanx remaining is up here. So we'll go ahead and make our way up here. We have our Sire's Obligation buff for another 30 seconds, and unfortunately no rockets, although I do see a rocket over here. But even if we didn't have rockets, it's completely fine. Just stick him with the Wither Horde. Like I said, even if you hit his shield, uh, still counts as a stick, still goes into his body, and still does that damage over time. So your aim with it doesn't have to be impeccable. It's pretty easy to just kill him over time. So we'll go ahead and stick with one more. Also, if we ran out of our Sire's Obligation buff, we just go reacquire it and continue to kill him. Once all three of those phalanxes are dead and all these symbols are clear, clear on this room, on to the next section of the mission. Room's pretty easy. Like I said, just be respectful of the Cyclops. Hopefully this video is helping out so far. Do me a favor, scroll down a little bit, leave a like if it is. Up to you. Don't have to if you don't want to. I, you know, I know you probably don't want to. It's pain, but uh, yeah, if you, if you don't mind, helps channel. Up to you. The other 50% of the mechanics in this mission are right here. You notice previously we were picking up blue circles, gave us Sire's obligation to damage those phalanxes. These are the orange circles. They give us what is basically the amplified buff. It's called Dam's Gift and it allows us to go into these orange areas without taking any damage. So we're gonna pick up that first one. This area is kind of, it's got some little moving parts. We're just gonna wait for those. Take a right, take a left, 
boom, you're done with that section. It's just to introduce that mechanic to you. This section has you do three red diamonds. The way you do the three red diamonds is you run into three different rooms, kill a wyvern that's hanging out in each of the rooms, and go ahead and deposit some paracausal energy into that node to activate the diamond. Sounds a lot more complicated than it is. I'll show you the basic just a bit. These guys off me real quick. Run over here. Here is the first room. And you can body shot the wyverns with Celestial Nighthawk, and they'll die. And you get 33% of your shooter back. So Nighthawking them, super quick, makes things really easy. Missed my uh, gunpowder gamble there. I just trying to mop up some mentors behind me so I can get some of my super energy back in preparation for the next wyvern. Right here is the diamond console I was talking about. They have shields over them. When you kill the wyverns, shields go there. So there's one right there. Once you go ahead and turn that one off, you'll turn around. You'll see this little spinning wheel area. Run through it. Take a left. You'll see a hobgoblin and a minotaur that you can go ahead and kill. Once you kill them, you'll go ahead and hop up up here. You'll go ahead and do a healing grenade. Kill these small trash mobs right over here. Got some hobgoblin snipers. I'm shooting a rocket at them because I had so much heavy ammo right here. And you have a lot of moving pieces in this that are kind of annoying. So just go ahead and take your time. No need to rush. Look for the section that's not moving. And then right around this corner is a wyvern. So be careful. Take your time with him. If you have your Nighthawk, one shot, he's gone. If you don't, simply Wither Horde and Rockets will do the trick just fine. Uh, obviously, we have DM's Gift right now. If you need to reacquire it, it's right back there where we came from. Once you have that wyvern taken care of, you can just go ahead and rush through here to the back of the room. Go ahead and put your Paracausal Energy in and then take an immediate left and you'll head out through this little section right here. Once you do that, you have a little hallway of enemies. If you do not have your super up at this point, you can go ahead and kill them to hopefully get your super uh, energy a little bit back up in preparation for the final wyvern. Um, like I said though, even if you don't, simple uh, wither horde of rockets will take care of the wyvern just fine. Should be able to get my super energy back here though, so yep, not a problem. I'm gonna go ahead and grab Dam's gift, run over here, and we should be coming up on the wyvern. He likes to kind of hide on this left side right here. So we're just gonna poke our head in, say what's up, body shot in, he's gone. And then we'll clean up some of the other ads here to make it a little bit safer to run in here. Here's the final little area where we can dunk our paracausal energy and go ahead and turn on that third crystal. Crystal, diamond, whatever. Once we do that, we'll be able to go ahead and follow the path take a right as we come out we'll notice we have a couple of trash mobs that we're going to kill and we have a brand new wyvern that's going to be chilling right over here i recommend killing this wyvern with wither horde and rockets because right when you come out here you're going to have a really big uh, minotaur boss that will spawn that you want to save your golden gun for right there also want to play back a little bit because you've got some hobgoblin snipers that can be kind of a pain so we're just going to play back a little bit here pop our goldie try and line up the crit Almost one-shot him. Works just fine. Uh, the encounter does not end when you kill that boss, though, so don't run out and be reckless. The encounter ends when you kill all of the Vex enemies. That includes these two snipers that are sitting here in the back, so make sure you're a little careful of them. You'll be fine. Once you're done with that, you'll run through this portal, and you have a bit of a traversal area. Just kind of be respectful of these little platforms that go up and down. Take your time. Follow exactly where I'm going. Gonna wait until they go back and forth. Apologies if the uh, video is a little um, laggy. Uh, my PC's been acting up a little bit. I don't really know what's going on, um, but hopefully it's, I mean, it's a little framey, but you can still tell what's happening. So hopefully not too big of an issue. Um, for this section right here, you'll notice if someone goes back and forth, wait until it's in the blocking position. When it's in the blocking position, that's where you can kind of make your jump. Because by the time you actually jump and arrive here, it'll be gone. Same with this one, it'll go back and forth here. So we're gonna wait until it goes in that position. Boom. Then we can start to make our jump around it. And we're pretty much done with this section, just like that. It's a weird little traversal area, kind of annoying. Again, sorry about the frame lag. I have no idea what's going on with my computer. Gotta try and fix that. Uh, OBS has been kind of weird for me recently. So uh, if, anyone, if anyone knows what's causing that, uh, <laughs> would appreciate the insight. Um, 
it's it's weird because uh, on my actual gameplay screen it doesn't look like that whatsoever it looks perfectly fine on like on my gameplay monitor uh it just looks a little weird on the recording preview window so i don't know it's okay uh kill a couple more enemies follow the paths once you get to this big open area you'll go ahead and jump over to the right hop down over here and hop down big old jump over here and you'll run into a big area of like a bunch of tank and enemies so we're gonna go ahead and throw our gunpowder gamble make sure we dispatch all of those uh axion darts so they're not messing with us try and take care of any enemies on high ground then we'll go ahead and throw our healing grenade get our restoration buff going and hopefully kill a bunch of enemies so that we can maintain it four seconds for every solar kill which is pretty easy a lot of squishy enemies over here taking care of all the centurions and we're through just fine then we're gonna go ahead you can run past these enemies to be honest uh if you want to they're not gonna pose too much of a threat we're just trying to get to the next area kill a couple just get your restoration buffs going and whatnot so up to you you can take a little bit more slowly if you want to this encounter is basically the same as the first real encounter that we had. The only difference is that now we have both buffs. Something to make note of here is if you... So right now I have damn skip for 45 seconds. If I jump into the blue buff, which is Sire's Obligation, while I have damn skip, I get a buff called Crowned by Dragons. That buff simply means that you have both of the buffs at the same time. You have the benefits of both of them. So you can run into the orange areas and you can damage the phalanxes. And you can refresh the combo of the buffs by stepping into either one. It'll refresh you for the full 45 seconds. Similar to that first encounter, no idea if you have to do these in order, but might as well. Why take the risk? So we've got bird first. So we'll run into the bird room and kill the bird phalanx. Um, have our Nighthawk available. So we can just go ahead and pop it. One shot him real fast, wherever he is. And then we can just go ahead and make our way up. Maybe throw our gunpowder gamble, get a little super energy back. Um, if you're crowned by Dragon Cyber, gets low when you're in there trying to kill them. It, no shame in running out and refreshing your buffs, because you'll start taking damage if you're in those rooms without Dam's Gift, uh, or crowned by Dragons, either or. Um, so yeah, something worth noting. Next one is the Eight Snake, so it's either going to be this middle one, which it is, or it could have been the room over there on the right side, but it is in fact this middle one. We don't have our Golden Gun available, so we'll just go ahead and kill this guy with Wither Horde and apex predator making switch rockets go, ahead, go back and forth all day long got Carter campbell get to play this head glitch on the staircase nice and easy dude's dead which means all that's left must be the fish that's the third and only option left i'm gonna kill some of these enemies just to get our super uh ready again so we can have our nighthawk available when we run in to kill this guy so we'll run up here just need like one more kill pop the nighthawk Pop the phalanx right in the head. Once you kill the third phalanx, everything despawns. Boom, you're good to go. Again, sorry about the frame rates. I have no idea what's going on. It's really annoying me. Um, hopefully it's not, it doesn't look too horrible on YouTube, but my apologies. Now we're sitting, getting ready for the final boss. Same loadout, get your rally banner. You're gonna hop down here, get both of the buffs immediately, refresh your crown by dragons. You're gonna take a right, and you're just gonna kind of hang out in this section for the entire encounter. I like to pop the Nighthawk immediately to kill that first phalanx and that'll force the other phalanx to start running over at you. Um, you can easily drop him with your bait and switch, um, rocket, and wither hordes, and all that good stuff. Goes down pretty quickly. You just kind of let him walk into you. Only thing you need to keep an eye out for when you're in this uh, encounter is occasionally you'll get some harpies that'll spawn, and you need to keep an eye of your crowned by dragons buff, since this is one of those orange areas that you need Dam's Gift to be able to survive. So make sure that you're hopping in and refreshing the buff right there in front of you here and there, just so that you can make sure that you're not gonna be taking damage over time because you're lacking Dam's Gift. So we're just gonna clean up some of these harpies. Once you go ahead and kill both of those phalanxes, it is super safe to go ahead and damage the boss. So we're just gonna go ahead and shoot at him. I don't really know why I got immunes right there. But you can just kind of go back and forth at the boss only other thing you need to be worried about is he will spawn some of the detain harpies to kind of fly in at you um they're pretty easy to avoid and they get one shot but yeah just keep an eye out for them and then the final thing is that on occasion he will spawn some taken goblins that will make each other invincible and most notably make the boss 
invincible. So I do kind of like to run around here and take some of them out. They're also good fuel for keeping your restoration and radiant buffs uh, maxed out if you kill the solar damage. Um, here's those harpies I was talking about where if they hit you, you get detained. Pretty easy to get out of the detained, not too crazy. I'm gonna try and hop out here, get safe since I am taking a lot of heat. Um, go ahead and put a few shots into this dude. Apex Predator. And then your Nighthawk is gonna do pretty much half of this health bar. So you could even do just like kind of wait around until your Nighthawk is fully charged. New set of the taken enemies. And of course, we're gonna almost get one shot here because my positioning is really bad. But just gonna go ahead and play over here. Um, you can also just kind of jump up and chuck Wither Hordes at the boss, assuming that there's no goblins that are making him immune. Right now there is, so I have to go ahead and take care of that goblin that is making him immune. But once I do, simple enough to go ahead and lob some Wither Horde shots at him. He hurts a ton because of the void threat, um, so that's why that's why he's chunking me so hard. Um, but yeah, so just play safe, play your distance. Easy enough, a couple rockets, Wither Horde rockets back and forth, stay in this corner. You'll be good to go. Pretty simple. And just like that, you have soloed the brand new Starcross mission. Run over here to the back of the room, pick up your chest, and you'll have the brand new Wishkeeper Exotic Bow. Found this helpful? Like and subscription would be appreciated if you want to. If you don't want to, no worries. Uh, if you do, much love to you. Hope this helped. Thank you so much for watching, and as always, have a great day.